Hey YouTube, I'm back with another deck profile. Today I'm going to do a deck profile on my updated Magia deck. So, uh, originally I wanted to create uh, two Magia decks, one with Harry and one without it. Um, but in playtesting it, I found like the best way to go is to just make one that has the strongest build, or I guess the most consistency. So this is basically my updated Pale Moon Magia deck based off of the new cards from Set 8, Absolute Judgment. So, we'll get right into it here. So, first, Grade 3, obviously, for Masked Magician Harry, because he's the main... In stride format, he's probably, like, the best build out there now. Um, Silver Thorns are, are fun, but they're kind of too slow now. Although, they can do some pretty decent uh, rush initially. But once this deck gets going, though, I feel like Magic is just a lot better. Uh, the next grade two I'm running is four praised evil tamer, uh, Muriel. Muriel. So uh, she was the one that was featured in the show at the end of the season uh, between Luna and Om um, in the final match. Uh, you could run. There's there is an argument made to run Manticore, the previous grade three that I was running, uh, mainly because he does have that uh, search ability for a uh, Magia. So you could do two of him and two of this if you wanted. Um, but I felt like he, he isn't really needed in terms of my build because I'm not running, for one thing, I'm not running the, uh, the Hoop Master this time around. I went back with the Dark Side Mirror Master Sentinel, the, basically the Unflip Perfect Guard. So, typically, I like to run those type of cards, those type of grade 3s, if I'm running the new Sentinel with the keyword. I tend to call it the keyword Sentinel for the clan, but since I'm not running it this time around, uh, I wanted to try her out, and she actually has pretty good... Um, non-restricted effect if you ride her as a vanguard so she can call something out and try to rush that turn so if and then you can stride on top of it so um, it's not too bad um, she does have a pretty good effect when placed from the soul so she has pretty good power gain she can form 21k relatively easy with a 7k behind her and that sort of thing uh, the, for the grade 2 lineup I'm running for dark side princess I am a big fan of this card dark side princess the dark side uh, archetype in general I feel is really good. I like that this card's not GB restricted. Um, it can hide itself if you're up against a, like if you call it out early to rush, you can rush really well with this card. Um, and then it can hide in the soul um, from, from the moment you would call it as a grade 2 or as a rear guard on turn 2. Um, so I've, oftentimes I found myself rushing the opponent down really fast with these. Uh, swinging at, at a 9k for 14 and they don't have a 10 or they can only afford to block one of them So four copies of this to max out the likelihood of, of using this card um, The only downside of this card is sometimes because it doesn't have Magia um, It does run into problems where you need to select a card with a Magia ability from the soul um, But it's still relatively easy to call out with Harry's on stride skill and that sort of thing uh, Next I'm running three flying Perryton. So Perryton is really good at building soul um, in addition to Harry's on stride skill um, and it has a magia effect which is the main reason why I'm running three copies of it um, next to counterbalance flying Perryton's soul charging I'm running two of this new card red star dual horn so this one basically it has the same type of uh, ability as Perryton only it's kind of in the reverse so the first effect that it has when it's placed on RGB1 is it is an 11k attacker so I, I like that um, the second thing, that means if you call it with Harry, it's like 16k base, so that's really nice. Uh, but its other effect is Magia. When it's placed, you can Soul Blast 1 and choose a card from the Soul Call to the same column as this unit. So this this card, I don't run too many of it because, first of all, it's Soul Blast uh, instead of Soul Charges. So it fits with Periton. It, I feel like they kind of complement each other. So we're, this one's Soul Charges, this one's Soul Blast. Um, and really, with the Magia, with Harry as the Vanguard, on stride skill, stuff like that, um, it's not too big of a problem, Soul Blasting, but you do need to keep in mind that you do kind of want to keep the Soul um, to have decent options. Because sometimes your rear guards will get uh, retired, or you'll call over them to get additional attacks, and stuff like that. So, um, I feel like this card is still relatively good, the two copies. And then the last grade 2 I'm running is Crescent Moon Juggler. Um, he was, was really good when he came out, but now I feel like Red Star kind of uh, replaced him. Um, I don't know, I may, mainly I don't like him because of the Counter Blast 1, um, and Red Star kind of is similar to him in terms of being an 11k, uh, but he does give you freedom in the sense that you don't have to call 
the same the card that front that he calls in the same column so i like that he has that freedom flexibility so if i take out red star i may put back in the um the gray two that looks at three and puts one to soul uh, when it's placed, but that one doesn't have Magia, and these all have Magia, so that's why I kind of want to keep this Magia count relatively high. For grade ones, I'm running four Dark Side Mirror Master. Um, I'm running basically the Dark Sides with Harry uh, because I feel like they're pretty good, um, and the deck does seem to counterblast quite a bit now due to the new Stride unit using Counterblast One. I kept Crescent Moon Juggler on Stride Skill, all that kind of stuff. So. This is pretty good, and I'm not running, like I said earlier, I'm not running the Manticore um, Grade 3. I'm, I'm running Muriel instead, so uh, I won't be able to search this. So there's no reason not to run this over the other one. But Hoopmaster, if you have a Hoopmaster, Hoopmaster I think is the cheaper one than Darkseid, uh, and it's it's still pretty good. Next, 4 Masquerade Bunny, just to stride and make sure Harry is the Vanguard. You really want Harry as your main Vanguard so that the deck has maximum efficiency. So four copies of that. Uh, next, three Cutie Paratrooper. It's kind of like Periton, only it can potentially be better because it has Magia in addition to uh, the Soul Charge 1. It calls something in the same column as it, and it gives it 5k power. So it's, uh, it's a really nice card. I would run four, but I did need to make room for some extra tech cards. And those being one, Moonlight Melody Tamer Betty. So she can essentially get you an extra attack. Um, but the one thing about her, the downside of her, is that she can only call a Magia unit. So one, the best card for her to call, typically would be Crescent Moon Juggler, um, or Flying Periton. But then Flying Periton will call something on top of her. So if you don't want her to like die or get retired, then you can't really call a bunch of other things except for like this guy, or maybe this guy, and he don't have to use his ability to call something if you don't want to. He'll just be on 11k. But it depends. You can use her uh, tactically to push for game and stuff like that, or get extra attacks. And then I'm want, trying one unicycle tumbler. Um, it does have the ability to unflip. I may take out Betty and put a second one of these, so I have more unflip power. Um, but I am running the unflip perfect guard, so I don't know. I've run into a couple issues where I noticed that I could burn through counterblast pretty fast, though. Uh, and then I'm running one egg juggler. Uh, because I don't run the draw triggers anymore, and I want some extra draw power since all the cards tend to get s stuck in the soul and nothing gets set on the field. So it's really dependent on being able to stride. So Egg Juggler at 1 is pretty nice. I've seen some people running 2. Um, it's, it's really hard to figure out the Grade 1 lineup because I'm running 4 of the Masquerade Bunny, so it takes up a lot of space. But that's basically it, unless I wanted to run like 7 Grade 3s or something. For the trigger lineup, so I put in this Prankster Girl of Mirrorland, and boy is this card good. This, uh, like this stand trigger, eliminates the need to run the Grade 2 that look that does the same thing. Um, but basically this thing has super high efficiency at thinning your deck and putting itself back. Basically what it happens is GB1, when it's put into the soul, so basically when you, anytime you soul charge, like with the Onstrike skill for instance, or uh, Cutie Paratrooper, or any of the cards of Soul Charge. When this card's getting Soul Charge, you can put it on the top of the deck, then you can put any other card that's not named this into your soul as a substitute, and then shuffle the deck. So it's really, really good at deck thinning. Uh, one thing it, I don't like about the stand, though, is it doesn't really mix well with Dark Side Princess, because I'm running stands. If you attack with her, then she goes into the soul. Um, so sometimes, like, the best card... The best column for Darkseid Princess is to have Betty behind her. Um, because Darkseid will go away anyway. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. The stand doesn't really work with Darkseid that well. Um, but it's still su super good not to run. So that's why I definitely recommend running it. Then I'm just running a critical. So I'm running the Darkseid Swordmaster. Like I said, I'm running all the dark sides. Uh, and then I could run Poison Juggler. Uh, but... I found in like all the probably like 14 games I've played with this deck so far, I've never, originally I was running Poison Juggler, and I never found myself having to use Poison Juggler's effect. Uh, yeah, there are some situations like you can put it in the soul for Dark Side Princess to make it attack for 17. Um, so, I mean, I probably will put it back in, but I like Nightmare Doll. I want to represent the Nightmare Dolls because I don't have Nightmare Doll Alice, uh, although she'll probably get reprinted at some point, then I'll be able to finish that deck. Um, but yeah, I'm just running a critical for now, and then the new Nightmare Doll Dory as the heal. 
But yeah, ideally, if I was going to play this deck competitively, I would recommend running the Poison Jugglers because they can come in handy. Uh, and then the starter is Cat Knight of High Boots. He is, I feel, the best starter for them right now. Um, Happiness Collector is a decent one. Um, in the sense that you do get the benefit of having a proper booster in the early game, whereas with with this guy you don't have a booster, so you don't really generate a lot of early game pressure. So it, it's in very it's in stark contrast to Silverthorns, which is the other popular build right now. Um, but the fact that this card can hide and reuse itself to build columns and call everything out, I just feel like the benefit of this card way outweighs the downside of not being able to uh, pressure the opponent in the early game. So for the stride deck. Um, it's pretty unique. Pale Moon has a, lot, has a lot of options now. So I'm running three Carnivorous Megatrick Priana. Um, she's pretty good. The only thing, the only reason why I don't want four of her is because I don't like that I have to take a card from my hand and put it into the soul. So that's the reason why, because of that negative aspect of her, that's why I did stick, I kept my three Mephistos in here. So originally, if you remember my old deck profile, I was running four of this guy. This guy is still a really good card. I like that he doesn't use Counterblast, so there's situations where he can be uh, more suited than uh, Priana. Um, so I'm running both of them just to keep the options open. And then 3 Millward, she's still relatively good because she can allow you to get a lot of extra attacks in during the battle phase. Um, if they let it hit, if they let attacks hit, so uh, pretty good. And then Lunatech Dragon at two copies just to stride him one time. Uh, the deck, Pale Moon doesn't have any guard restriction or anything like that, so um, I use him just as a draw out the perfect guard from the opponent, just force it out, get rid of it uh, if I saw them get it, get one of them in their hand on the drive check or whatever. So um, he's in here for critical pressure basically, and he does have a pretty nice uh, side effect of giving anything placed on the soul that turn 2k power. Uh, then, of course, the one, Harry, Dragon Masquerade Harry, he's your uh, finisher card. Sometimes, though, I see myself using him um, before the game can end just to be able to get a bunch of attacks in that turn. So he's kind of like Olivia in Bermuda Triangle, if I had to compare him to something. Um, but he, just one copy of him is enough because he has a hefty Counter Blast 2. And then for the G-Guardians, I'm running two of the new Maja, so Doting Harlequin. Um, she's pretty nice. I feel like she's really good with Silverthorn. Um, because if you don't have a Magia Vanguard, you can Soul Charge 3. So she, she, I like that they did that. They, they made it so that if you have a Magia Vanguard, she doesn't Soul Charge 3. Instead, she gives, um, an extra 5k. But with Silverthorn, if you want to G-Guard early, uh, you if it, and your soul's kind of lackluster, you can Soul Charge 3. Also works well with, like, the Legion. If you're running a Legion slash Harry or some kind of mixed build like that, it's probably pretty good in there. And then, of course, two Chainsaw, Mega Trick, Furnival. Furnival is just a really good G Guardian for the clan. Um, he helps you, uh, like, cycle stuff into the soul. So, nothing more to say about him. Um, if you wanted to run another G Guardian, like if you don't have Harry, for instance, then you want to run a third Furnival because um, he's, he's still really, really good. So anyway guys, that's the main deck. Um, it's interesting with the 3-3-3 because you have a lot of options. Like you can stride Mephisto, flip up Priana, and then on the next stride you can have these two up. Then you stride Priana, then do her thing, flip up uh, another Mephisto or another one of her. And then you have like three Magias up and then you could go into him. So you can kind of like loop these two together. Or you could even like use these two to loop up the Millward. Because I, I treat Millward the way I treat Verano in Neo Nectar, in the sense that sometimes I'll flip up her. I'll never stride her by herself and flip up a copy of her. I'll stride her after one of these two have already flipped her up. Because all three of these have Magia. Um, in addition, this thing also has Magia. And so does Harry. But I would never flip him up as for their effects for obvious reasons. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of Pale Moon Magia builds. How they stack up in the current meta. Uh, do you think that they're just as good as Grand Blue, if not better? And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.